Good afternoon. Today is Sunday, July 5th, 2020, and it is just about 4.10 p.m. Uh, here in Pasadena, California. Here is the update from last uh, weekend, last Sunday. So I left a story off. Uh, U UCLA Under Armour uh, deal is in trouble from the pandemic. Uh, this is the first of many guaranteed high-profile uh, sponsorship uh, problems you're going to see, deals that are going to come undone just because they're just not financially workable anymore. Again, that's part of our proposition here is to step into that gap with the uh, ASM and SRI financial products. Uh, that's one of the main ideas. So, um, yes, as indicated in the last uh, SEC filing with the court, that it is in fact the case that the auditor would not release uh, the audit results last year. Uh, as a result of the filing of the case, uh, we had some pretty tense conversations about that. Uh, they would not change their mind. Uh, that is the case. If I have to swear that before the court, well, I mean, I've already put that in the record as a sworn statement. That is what happened. But if they want the details of that, then I'll turn over the auditor's name uh, and they can contact them directly. Uh, that is what happened. That is the fact of it. Um, no amount of reasoning would unstick it. Uh, it doesn't make any difference really in this case because the, the financial raw documents are in the hands of the SEC. We had already turned that over. The issue is that the court doesn't have that information. So I can understand how if you look at only what's in the, uh, in the case filings, you don't see any uh, timeline. You might think that that $1.5 million was uh, raised it all at one time. Uh, or last week or something and sitting in the bank and not actually the entire budget across the term. So anyhow, um, the SEC has the documents, has had the documents since the, for years literally now, um, and, but the court doesn't. So um, I just want to be clear about that. And yes, the auditor, uh, the audit that we were paid for uh, I think it's sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000 didn't receive, which is going to reflect exactly what's in the raw documents. So it's just a confirmation of the same. So it, we supplying the raw documents will have the same effect. Um, basically, if the, if the uh, SEC tur uh, turns over the documents to the court that we turned over to them, it's going to match the audit results. I mean, it's, there's no difference between those things. Um, so anyhow, but we do need the results released one way or the other at some point here, somehow. Uh, NASCAR December championship canceled. Uh, that's just further indication of where the, the, the marketplace is uh, in terms of dealing with the crisis, uh, canceling that al already here, and it's uh, just July. And Major League Baseball players uh, already uh, publicly opting out of this crazy uh, short season the major league baseball is put together again i would be surprised if this uh, holds together even to get started and if it gets started that it stays underway uh, the real risk again is that you're going to disappoint the fans and that those fans will uh, not come back period not just uh, because of covid19 and social distancing and all of that but just because you disappointed them and they've got lots of other entertainment options um, 400,000. So just going through the statistics for the markets, uh, both sides, the learning market and the pilot market, have about 400,000 orders each. Uh, so they, they both traded quite a bit. Uh, the, the free money market and then the, what we call the pilot market, the loaned money market, they both got about the equivalent number of um, orders, but the, uh, the, the learning market actually has three times the volume of, tra of tra actual sports shares traded. So that's interesting. Uh, Circus du Soleil, uh, Las Vegas bankruptcy. That's kind of surprising and sad, actually. You know, that's one of those attractions. Again, point is a really high profile brand. This is not really very long to have shut down. And already that the strain of that has resulted in, uh, in a bankruptcy of such a huge brand that's been in uh, Vegas culture and in the entertainment culture for such a long time. It just shows how fragile it was. Uh, unions versus the casinos on uh, COVID-19. Vegas is just the beginning. Again, this is going to be a ground zero. Um, watch what happens 
here to, to get a, a read on uh, what's going to happen in other places. This is the, the front of the train, so to speak. So already you're having challenges between the unions and the casinos, which totally makes absolute 100 sense. Uh, Facebook blowback, Coca-Cola, Adidas, Unilever, um, all of this, uh, you know, changing of the culture, I would say, the culture, corporate culture. I'm not going to get uh, overly excited here about this because we've seen times in the past when this stuff started down this uh, aggressive track of change and then got off the rails pretty fast. The enthusiasm burned out or some other thing took everybody's attention. But it, it's going along the track of activism through corporate uh you know, participation, non-participation, sponsorships, basically corporations becoming more politically engaged. We'll see what happens. Um, betting is dead in California till 2022. This is absolutely very critical, negative information for the gambling faction. You're not going to see any of that until the uh, election cycle in 2022, not 21. So that's pretty good ways off. Number five economy in the world, this counts. So not going to be able to have any sort of um, activity here that's meaningful. So that's dead. Uh, big positive for us because California is where we are, A, and B, the size of it and the signal that it's going to send to the market. Broadway shut down. Again, come on. I mean, that's just those words should tell everything there is to say. Mississippi removing the rebel flag from their uh, from their flag so fast. I'm frankly shocked personally at the speed at which that this happened. Uh, I know Mississippi. I have relatives in Mississippi. I have relatives from Mississippi and ones who live in Mississippi. And this is really surprise. It's a very big deal that, that they did this and they did this so incredibly fast. Uh, it's positive, but it's a, it's a very big surprise because <laughs> As far as being hardcore uh, Confederate idealism sort of thing, yeah, Mississippi, as evidenced by it being in their flag, should tell the story by itself. Uh, Lloyds of London looking at black swan reinsurance. So again, the issue here is going to be is, and is already, and I think you're starting to see it finally bubble up, is the problem of risk management in this new environment. So... Again, we have a product that is designed for this. That's the SRI product, the one we have patented presently just in China and pending in a bunch of other places. That product is a solution for this. So anybody who sees this, give us a, a ring here. Give us a contact. Write, you know, write us an email. Get hold of somebody in our staff. Uh, you know, This is a real thing. I mean, we have a product for this. Um, so, yeah. Risk insurance, pandemic risk insurance. That's what the world is trying to figure out. So that's not even dealing with the gambling issue side of it. This is dealing with the risk management side of it, which is where SRI, Sports Risk Index, okay, is focused. May, minor League Baseball canceled yet. <laughs> nuts. Minor League pay, Baseball canceled yet. Ma Major League Baseball proceeding along this bizarro path again. We'll see if that sticks. Trump social media backlash on Reddit and Twitch. Only reason this is a material, and again, some, some stuff on Facebook and Twitter with the marking of statements that are false. Uh, it's really a, it's, it's going to determine, uh, obviously, the battle lines are being drawn here again to determine what's free speech and what's, uh, you know, political speech that's harmful because it's misleading. Uh, boy, that's a... That's a whole conversation that's way too big for and, and not on topic here. So I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, one of the statistics I came across, which is really fascinating, uh, from Zandi, Mark Zandi at Moody's back from 2008, in the 2008 crash, was talking about the effect of unemployment insurance in the economy. Uh, 1.64 1 GDP, 1 GDP multiplier. So every dollar you pay out in uh, unemployment insurance, you're going to get it back at 1.64 in GDP. I'm actually shocked at that, that it's that high, and I'm going to dig into this a little bit deeper to see if this is right. It's a statistic that I can use in building the model for why ASM is the solution for this chronic unemployment issue in the middle that just never seems to really go away. 
uh, to bring the world to full employment and keep it there. So this is something to um, to keep an eye on. Uh, well, I mean, not to keep an eye on, to investigate, to see if this model makes sense. Uh, so 1.64 GDP multiplier for unemployment insurance paid out. If that's true, that's an enormous return on investment for unemployment insurance. And then 1.59 is the return on infrastructure. So it's actually, you know, I mean, just at the, at the surface, that would tell me that to put it in the hands of consumers is directly is, is more beneficial to GDP because they go out and spend it in the economy than it is to build up things that make the economy stronger, like infrastructure projects. Well, things that you can't directly touch but that kind of underlay everything. So, uh, you know, it, it means, well, I mean, it's simplest way to put it is, it means that putting the money directly in the hands of the people is the best way to do it based on this versus, versus infrastructure, at least infrastructure related spending. So indirect spending, right? To infrastructure. Um, NPC filed bankruptcy. This is huge because this is about a thousand store Wendy's Pizza Hut franchisee. Um, Wendy's has been drifting for years, but Pizza Hut's pretty strong. And it's pretty, it surprises me that this would happen because in this environment, when, uh, Pizza Hut had really become a delivery sh uh, shop anyway. And people are delivering pizzas. I mean, heck, I even see them in our trash cans here. So I know they're still delivering lots of pizzas. So if that is not enough, if that change of more delivery is not enough, it tells me that the actual net uh, fast food consumption, even when the delivery is working, went down, right? So anyway, that's very meaningful in terms of the broader economy, and it's, again, a lot of other conversation about that. But, but it's, uh, it's kind of surprising. Um, I would think that, it would, that Wendy's Pizza Hut on that scale, because with a 1,000 stores, you're going to have a very large footprint all over the place. Uh, so it's a pretty good sample in the economy that it would be uh, stable to rising given, given uh, the pandemic. So the, the Missouri, I'm pretty sure it was Mansion uh, double PI lawyer, which to me is the absolute worst of the worst of the worst kind of lawyer. That's what I grew up around in Louisiana and why I didn't pursue law past debate in school is when I understood what that what kind of conniving that was. Uh, so that couple with their, <laughs> with their mansion stuck in the middle of nowhere uh, defending, quote, defending uh, the neighborhood neighbors, essentially, uh, with guns is a, such a symbol of where we are in this country and what's wrong that, I mean, an entire movie can be made out of those pictures. Every aspect of that, from the lawyer side to the mansion in the middle of nowhere side to the, to the, to the really aiming a pea shooter. And I mean, the other one, yeah, that looked like an AK-47 or whatever, but or an AR-15. I mean, seriously, uh, or one of those mocked up uh, Walmart saw, you know, semi-automatic guns that make you think you're a tough guy. Um, crazy. So uh, no, we don't report any customer information or anything that's prohibited by law. It's prohibited by law, especially in California. Do your homework. California privacy laws are the strongest in the country. I'm pretty sure if not, it'll be something in New York. But I, I think no, because it just changed recently. So no, we do not disclose anything other than is required by law. Payments are made by PayPal. PayPal automatically sends 1099 transmission reports of, um, you know, of customer payments to the IRS and to the other world tax authorities, as well as to the customer every year on a separate money transmission form. That automatically happens. Our privacy policy does not allow us to disclose anything other than what's required by law. There have been many, many payments to, to, to put meat on the bone on the 150,000 roughly in five years. There have been many, many individual payments to individual people over the entire time, including ongoing. Okay, so it is an ongoing thing to different people across multi, many across the entire span of the pilot market, which is four years and counting, if 
that's right, or five. We're not to five, I don't think, yet. As I've lost a year there. I think it's four years and counting presently. Uh, that, yeah, that it has been, it's been many payments. Uh, they've been in our tax filings with the uh, IRS. They've been in all of the, the information. So, but no, we don't disclose that to anybody else. It's against the law. It's against the law on, on many different levels. Uh, only in response to legal process, valid legal process, would that be done. Uh, NFL, NASCAR, Hollywood looking to Congress for pandemic insurance. Again, this is uh, SRI, okay? This is the same thing of Lloyd's of London, so add that to the Lloyd's of London story. Um, the SRI is that product. 747 cancellation, that's just kind of sad, uh, I think. You know, our, our, it's an indicator of, of our glory days gone. Uh, we were the manufacturer of, of everything that, that any, anybody wanted in the world. Flagship of our manufacturing uh, prowess. One of them was the 747, which, you know, anyway, done. Uh, I'm sure this, this pandemic has, has been a major contributing factor to that. So a couple more copycats on the scene. Not a surprise. One with a gambling spin. Uh, totally not surprised there because of the market being supposedly opened wide open when it's not actually open wide open. But it's going to attract other players straight trying to knock off of variations of our slogans and stuff. Uh, it Really, it's a, it's a compliment, but uh, we've seen this show before. Uh, I don't think the model that they've come up with is going to work based on what I've seen of it. Uh, but it's gambling related, so it's, it's not even in category. Another knockoff, which is looks like it's trying to aim towards... Uh, so the idea of sports market um, is, a, is just straight going after the Fantex model, which was a multi-million, 50, about $50 million, um, you know, firebomb into the dirt. So uh, good luck with that. Uh, it's not going to work. The idea of fractional athletes, it's already been tried. And the, the other stuff is about something about trying to fractionalize um, the company model. Just be careful. Uh, if you step onto anything that the performance asset class, which is what we've done, uh, or anything that somewhat com uh, com conflicts with our patent applications, then you will hear from somebody uh, regarding that, ne that legal violation. 11.1% um, unemployment, utter hogwash. Uh, look, a survey versus a legal contract. Unemployment insurance is a legal contract. It has to be recertified usually every two weeks. It, under penalty of perjury, which can result in fines and or imprisonment, that versus a survey which is going to be lied about when you ask people what the condition of their job is because they're ashamed or whatever, whatever, whatever. Just be, all of the flaws that happen in any survey, polling data, just go back to the, 2000, you know, the 2016 election of Trump. OK, that's survey information. Polling data is what said uh, no way in heck was he ever going to win. So there you have it. Surveys are that. OK, uh, when you ask somebody to do a, a legal document, that's a little different. Most people are not going to lie on that. By and large, it's it's very small number of people that are willing to, to do that. So if you want to do the math, it's very simple. Look at the original 40 million claims that were filed. It was very 35, 40, like right off the bat. Add the weekly additional claims. And then, I mean, I'm surprised they try to do that, I guess because nobody's holding them to it, acting like this is the real number. No, original claims, new claims every week, minus the expired claims, okay? Plus a buffer of people that you can, nobody can measure this. So we can leave that off because nobody knows. People that don't apply are unemployed have basically just given up, okay? They're not even in there, okay? They're not even in that number, and so we're not even going to try to put that in there. But if you just do what I said from public reporting already out there, you're going to come up with a number at least twice as big as the one that they're reporting, at least 20%, 22%. At least, if you just do a, the claims... Ongo the original spike of claims was like crazy, 30 million to 35 million. Then the original another week, like 10 million, and then it started to drop into single digits. And it's there, we still have new claims every week, and the, so and you have some dropping off, but the numbers don't add up. If they look at their continuing claims number, it doesn't match the math I just gave you. Okay, 
the somebody's fudging the continuing claims number because to match or kind of get close still doesn't match but it comes a lot closer to the number they're trying to get everybody to buy but the other individual numbers if they're done week by week they show you clearly the number is at about 20 to 22 25 percent presently so unbelievable I, it's just wow it's all right there in plain sight anybody that wants to do it so challenge me on it go look it up show me where i got it wrong um u.s has the highest cases and deaths in the world <laughs> yet here we are talking like we're it's just it's literally a brave somewhere between a, a brave new world if you know that series and 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 orville's 1984 you know Yet, you, do, you look at all the public reporting and the maps from every reporting angle that you can find on the planet clearly show that the numbers are spiking at higher than they've ever been. So, how in the hell is this good? How, how I mean, you don't have to, you pick, pick any media point in the world that has a map, and it's going to show you that we're, this bad, we're the worst case there is. So, Telling it's everybody's conspired everywhere on the planet, individual reporters, bloggers, YouTubers, everybody's conspired. Yeah, bullshit. Okay, that's just, whoo, that's la 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 nonsense to say that. But, you know, if you want to believe that for some reason, I don't know what that reason is, but, but you know, okay, it's, it's just false. It's just completely false. Um, mirror opposite sort of, you know, la la land upside down law you know false uh atlantic city reopening failure look it up don't believe me uh yeah nobody i mean cleaning the dice with plastic gloves nobody wants this um use that as a test case if you think that all of a sudden uh you have this idea that you you have this budget problem from covid 19 and gambling is going to solve your problems atlantic city dig into that story and make sure you dig in nice and deep okay because it's the test case that will tell you everything that will go wrong guaranteed including with the person that's presently in the white house that might try to convince you to do it i i mean i don't know anymore it's possible but taj mahal the trump taj mahal mess and everything connected to, to i actually went there i went there to uh to atlantic city during the taj mahal wind up in the in the 90s or whenever that was and at its best it is uh it's an it's a horrendous mess uh embarrassing it was no good at the peak so and it's been nothing but downhill from there you can look it up online yourself or go there and see for yourself so that's the future if you take that on idea on that you're going to solve covid related or actually even any if you're going to do anything related to putting gambling into your system into your state budgets and your and your and your economy that's what you're looking up looking forward to is an atlantic city future so you know if that i i mean there's a good long timeline there that you can study to see what will happen and and you you just you'll go right right into that so your voters any voters out there that's your future you know just look at the trump Taj Mahal and timeline around gambling in Atlantic City and all the promises made and lied and all the bankruptcies and all the contractors that didn't get paid and all of the jobs lost and the drugs and the divorces and the bankruptcies and all the rest of it and see if that's the future you want. Uh, okay, so Hero Huddle was canceled for Friday on account of the vacation uh, weekend, so that's the reason uh, anybody was getting that was get well people in the program that contribute to any program and get copies of that um, I released a sports vote manifesto cover mock-up and the first few chapters um, that's out there so you you know you've seen it already um, the idea there and it's it's being developed behind all of this is that uh, sports markets not only fix the economic issue creating a new ecosystem um, around sports that everybody has a piece of all stakeholders benefit from instead of just a few um, it will increase political power for the masses through sports I mean that's the new tool to create political power so that's that's the idea behind the idea 
Uh, SEC clarification. So, yes, um, they filed on Friday a request from the court to explain the one and a half million dollars. Uh, again, if you look at only the pleadings in the record of the case, not what we gave the SEC when they were asking us questions. If you just look at the record, there's no way to know whether that money came a day, a week, a month, a year, and, and no accounting for what happened to it. Okay, that makes sense. That seems to be what they want to know. Okay, fine. We've had all that information. The SEC has all of that information. I've tracked all of that from the day. I mean, I might have missed a day somewhere and caught it up later, but literally every single day, not in the last five years, but in the last 10 years, every single day I know where we were in cash and credit, income and expense, every single day across that time. So if you give me a date, I can tell you where we were. Uh, I, I know that, and I, again, all the raw bank account information, all the everything that they asked for the SEC, but that's the SEC. The court doesn't have it, so fine. We not held back any of that. So we'll, we'll be answering that in the next two weeks. Its deadline is uh, not this coming Friday, but the following Friday. Um, the day that the SEC case was filed, uh, the very day that it was filed, the company was running on my personal credit. It was not paying for itself. So there was not, there was no, I mean, the day that that happened, the, the economy had started to deteriorate. I told the team this long, I mean, that's in the record as well. I told them that it was deteriorating. It was, it was costing more than it was bringing in in donations, and I was making up the difference in my personal credit. Uh, at the point the case was filed, that was the case. I was making up for the difference to pay, like, Jason's salary, Ace's salary, Zach. Those things went on my personal credit cards, company expenses, travel expenses related to going to the conferences and meeting people and doing everything I could to promote Ace. All that stuff went on my personal credit. So... So, no, we didn't have a million and a half dollars to pay for. We've never had that in any sum. It's, it's been always, as we needed it, raised it. And at times I buffered it. I've kept it in, in a buffer and not asked for it. There were times when we didn't ask for any money. I mean, they're in my accounting cl clearly. And in, there were gaps where we didn't do any fundraising at all because I was just using what we had. So, Anyway, all that's fine, and they can have whatever they want. I have no issue with that whatsoever, um, and that's what we'll be providing. Yes, I was prohibited from discussing the, the case, and uh, even with the team internally when they were asking me questions, they told me to keep it extremely basic and even with need to know with people inside the team. And I did not know whether they were going to file a case or how they were going to proceed until the day they filed the case and told me and called me on the phone. That's when I found out. So I swear that's that's when I found out, and that's when they told me. I didn't know before that. Um, NewSportsEconomy.org site's been updated. Chad has taken that on. It's starting to look really good. We've updated with new materials and including the new direction and everything. Um, I mean, new direction. I mean, just expanding on the direction, really. Um, $165 billion quarterly loss in the world's largest pension fund. That just shows you how big the problem is and how hard it is to solve. That's the reason I bring that up. That's a lot. I mean, that's $330 billion. Uh, uh, I mean, what is that? I mean, it's, yeah, $670, $660 billion a year. Um, good God. Um, so, yeah, you know, I... I there, you, anyone who's holding the notion that I'm somehow hiding some private uh, information about ASM or funds or any, I don't care if all my stuff was stolen and published on the front page of the New York Times. I really don't. Um, it wouldn't be smart for me to allow that to happen or to put things out that uh, aren't necessary to put out. And I have to talk to the team about that a lot because they reel me back on those things. But I don't operate in those ways. i I believe you do what you do, and you be straight with people. And if you're, you know, if the feds crashed through the door and took all my stuff, I would just say you just could knock on the door and ask politely. I'd I'd hand it over to you. I'm not going to run away. I've been in the same place for a long time. So, yeah, I'm not running from anywhere. I wouldn't lose any sleep if they published the whole thing on the front page of the New York Times. So I've I've done the best I can with everything I have. Still do every single day. So. If you want to beat me to death on the on the account of what you find, then go for it. But I, I know I'm not oper operating in bad faith, and the people around me know that's not true. So, take take what you want, do with it what you will. 
Um, I saw I saw a, sp a spokesman uh, a spokesman a um, a book author. I was listening to on audiobook. Uh, I do that when I'm bicycling. It's a good idea, by the way. I think might give that a try. It's pretty good stuff. Get some brain food while you're getting exercise and getting a bit of sunshine. Um, kind of struck me. Um, Make America again was the was the slogan. I mean, just say that slogan slowly and, and take it in. Make America again. So California proposal. Um, so California fell apart. Already mentioned this. This is good. Their pitch was 500 million in tax, which is a lie. They never, ever, ever make those numbers. It never comes close. The current shortfall in the budget is 54,000 million. Okay, it's 54 billion is 54,000 million. So the 500 million is their headline number is not even a percent of that shortfall. And that number is way, way, way off the truth. It's always is, again, Atlantic City. Go look it up. Um, so it's less than 1%. It's not going to fix the problem. It's not going to come close to fix the problem. In fact, it's going to create a whole lot of new problems uh, that will swamp the old problem of the, five, of the tax uh, income shortfall. At $54,000 million, you got to find something new uh, to figure out to make that whole. Um, you know, I do have some ideas uh, with the team here uh, on what uh, we can help to help on that. And we'll get to that, but it's it's a little premature, not too premature. But now, since it's going to be dead till 2022, we're definitely going to get to talk to the governor about it. Um, all right. So California economy is the largest in the country, number five in the world. If that's your headline deal that you're selling everybody, that's pretty lame. And now it's dead. So it's going to send a signal. That's how that works. And the deals will only get worse from there. So that's your best deal is to California. So what, where does it go from there? Shot down. So the window stays open for sports investing and we keep plugging ahead. Um, if these videos are useful, please like, uh, hit like button, subscribe to it if you're not already. I know I have to say all this stuff now. That's what you do in the new social media world. Uh, hit the notify button if you want to be notified the next time uh, a new one is put up. Pass it around if you, if you think it's valuable or you think anybody cares. Uh, publish it anywhere you like. Um, you know, anything, anybody you think you might be interested in what we're doing. If you want information on us or support what we're doing, or if anybody that you send it to, if you want to put a contact email, uh, just I try to consolidate all this stuff into one place. I know some people track their YouTube comments and emails. It's too much trouble to keep track of, track of all that. If you want to give them a contact email, um, give them support at allsportsmarket.com. We, we focus everything on that address. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, I hope you had some enjoyment or maybe you're still enjoying the uh, July 4th holiday. And I'll update you again next weekend. Bye now.